All right, guys, welcome back. And we're looking at trigonometric rules, which is a very, very uh, useful set of formulae for applying to triangles. Now, there are two trigonometric rules, and these are the sine rule and the cosine rule. Now, one of the things that I want to stress on is for you not to mix up trigonometric rules with trig ratios that you did before. So, with trig ratios, you had sine, cosine, and tangent, but with the trig rules, there are only two, and that's the sine rule and the cosine rule. Now, here is some very, very important information. It says here, trigonometric rules can be, can be applied to all triangles. That's a big difference between trigonometric rules and trig ratios. Remember, trig ratios can only be applied to right angle triangles while trigonometric rules can be applied to all triangles. So, if you're not sure if a triangle is a right angle triangle, use trig rules because trig rules work on all triangles. So, remember, the big advantage that trigonometric rules have over trigonometric ratios is that trig rules can be applied to all triangles. So, that makes this guy very, 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 very useful. Okay? The next thing I want to point out is that Trig rules can find missing angles and lengths uh, on triangles. So that's, that's, that's um, a similar thing to trig ratios, except that trig ratios have limitations because trig, uh, trigonometric ratios only apply to right angle triangles. So trig rules, again, stressing again, trigonometric rules, or trig rules for short, can, uh, can be applied to all triangles, whether it is right angle triangles or not. And there are two types of trig rules, the sine rule and the cosine rule. Now, before we actually get into the sine rule, which is what we want to focus on today, it is extremely important for you to know a particular thing. Now, when you're going to use trig rules, uh, you have to label triangles uh, correctly. Now, typically, when they give you a triangle, and I'm using both a uh, right angle triangle and non right angle triangle because, as we said before, uh, trig rules can be applied to all triangles, right? So we can look at the right angle triangle and the non right angle triangle. It doesn't make a difference because trig rules can work on everybody. Now, this says label triangle with capital and common letters before working, and you're going to see what I mean in a little bit. Now, Typically, when I give you a triangle, this triangle is called triangle ABC. And listen very carefully now. As far as trig rules are concerned, you're going to see capital letters and common letters in both of the sine rule formula and the cosine rule formula. Okay? So, as far as trig rules are concerned, you're going to see capital letters and common letters in the sine rule formula and in the cosine rule formula. Now, let me understand the difference between the two. Now, capital letters in trig rules are going to be used to denote angles. So, this capital A here is going to denote the, 60 deg the, sorry, the 90 degree angle here. And this capital letter B here is going to denote whatever angle is at this vertex. So, the capital C is going to denote what angle is here, etc. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you um, the difference between the capital letters and the common letters and what they mean. So, let's say for argument's sake, um, this angle here, just for argument's sake, is 70 degrees. And obviously this is 90, this one here must be 20 degrees because all angles in a triangle must add up to 90. I'm just putting these angles here uh, because I'm going to be referring to them. Right? Now, this angle here is a 90 degree angle obviously. Now, this capital A here denotes the 90 degree angle at this vertex. Now, the side that is opposite capital A is common A. And the common A is going to denote a length of side. And in this particular case, here, the length of side that common A is denoting is BC. So, in other words, BC or the side BC is the same as little a or common A. I like to refer to them as big A and little a. Okay, so big A is a 90 degree angle and little a is the length of this side, which is in fact BC. Now, big B here 
is the 70 degree angle here. I'm just putting in that angle here to make reference to. So big B is the angle at this vertex and the side opposite big B is little b which denotes the length of this side which happens to be AC. So I'm showing you how to put on the, the common letters once you have the capital letters. And even if you have a triangle that didn't have these capital letters, you can put on capital letters on them as well. All right. If this is big C, then the side opposite this is little c. So again, little c denote length of side, which in this case is AB. Now, here quickly, big P, this side would be little p, big R, the side opposite it would be little r, and big Q, the side opposite that will be little q. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to have a, a, a problem using trig rule. It's very simple. The side opposite the vertex is the common letter for that vertex. So if the vertex is labeled um, big M, then the side opposite big M is going to be little m. And that is extremely, extremely important uh, in getting to understand uh, how, to, how to use uh, trigonometric rules. Now, I'm going to break here and process this video before we get into the meat of the matter, which is our first trig rule, which is the sine rule, which I'm going to be looking at a couple of examples, all right? So again, just to review quickly, this is the intro to trig rule, trigonometric rules, or trig rules for short. We have trigonometric rules that we're about to learn. Now, there are two types of trigonometric rules, or trig rule for short. And the first one is the sine rule. And the second one is the cosine rule. There's no such thing as tangent rule, okay? So there are two trigonometric rules, sine rule and cosine rule. Now, trigonometric rules can be applied to all triangles. And again, that's what makes this guy very, very useful. We can use trig rules on all triangles. And also, trig rules can be find a missing angle or a missing length of side, all right? Just like trig ratios, except that trig ratios are only limited to right angle triangles, while trigonometric rules can work on all triangles, all right? And before we actually start looking at any of the two trig rules, we have to understand the difference between um, capital letters on a triangle and common letters on a triangle. So what we're saying is that the capital letters are going to denote angle, and the common letters are going to denote length of side. So in this particular triangle here, a capital P would denote the angle at vertex P, while the side opposite that angle is little p. This here, which is capital R, would denote this angle here at the vertex, while the side opposite angle R is little r, which denote the length of side, which in this case it's PQ. The angle here at vertex Q, which is big Q, the side opposite big Q would be little Q, and little Q denote the length of this side, which is PR. So common letters denote length of side, and capital letters denote angle. So we want that to stick in the head uh, before we proceed to look at any of the three groups, and the first one we're going to tackle is the sine rule. So I just wanted to pick up on those couple of things, and I'll see you guys on the next video.